Hello, I'm here with... Eric Vale. Now, Eric Vale, you've been known for a lot of voice acting that you've done. Um, it's not from Dragon Ball, My Hero Academia, to countless other ones. What, w which one of these is like one of your most memorable roles or one that you look back on, you're like, man, I really love this one and I want to do more of it. It was uh, a role called Desert Punk in a show called Desert Punk that very few people, too few people actually saw. It's kind of a, uh, I would say like a, a raunchy, uh, a raunchy dystopian comedy that takes place in a Mad Max style wasteland. Now, you've done like a number of different animes of like different types where it's like some are like pretty, you know, straightforward to other ones where it's like you have superpowers and et cetera, et cetera. Which type of enemies do you like to voice act where it's the ones where it's like no hold bars or the ones that are a little bit more grounded to reality? Uh, the only thing I really care about is playing a character who is interesting. And um, I like playing villains for that reason. So Shigaraki has been a blast to play in My Hero, but I also really, really liked playing Farid in Seraph of the End. He was a delicious villain to play. Now, I've, now since you brought up Shigaraki, um, I've noticed in My Hero Academia, it's really exploded within this last few seasons. Did you, did you know that, did you anticipate the explosion of this anime, or did you think that it was going to be kind of like a quote-unquote normal, regular anime? I don't know. I, I was told how big it was going to be, and when it wasn't huge out of the gate, I was concerned that it wasn't going the direction we wanted it to. And then over the past year, it surprised me, the popularity of it. But that's the case with, that. Uh, how, that's sort of how I felt with Dragon Ball Z when I got cast on Dragon Ball Z. And then it's also how I felt about anime. I didn't, I mean, I'm, I grew up watching anime. I watched Robotech and stuff and watched it in college with my buddies. And then I started working in it and I, and I heard from people that like, anime is a dying industry and whatnot. And then it just keeps getting bigger and more popular all the time. Now, one of the big things, I'm, I'm glad you brought up anime during its early days, was like in the, uh, the mid-90s and early 2000s, the stigma was that America didn't really care about anime. That's why you saw like a lot of more or less not good voice actors. Do you believe that was a, that was a reason why anime was declining at first? And what do you believe helped brought a resurrection back to the Western side of the world? I think what made anime m more popular in the face of what you were saying is a higher caliber of talent being brought on board to do the dubs. I think you I think you started to see a big increase in the quality of the dubs when the dub houses figured that they needed to bring in trained actors to do these shows, not just a guy over in the other department who didn't have anything to do for the next hour, you know? Uh, once they started casting um, trained actors in the roles, and once they started and I don't mean just Funimation, I mean across in the industry. And they started hiring engineers who went to college to be engineers. They started hiring directors who had read a book on the subject. Then everything started changing for the better. Now, do you believe... Let's give it a second. You have three more minutes for this interview. <laughs> okay. Do you believe that that an anime could, substand, could stand on its own if the animation isn't well, that if the voice acting is good enough, that the voice acting could carry the anime, even if the animation isn't all that well? No. I think the thing that makes anime... The core thing that makes anime interesting to its audience is its storytelling. And the storytelling has to be good. Once the storytelling is good, then you've got it. Yeah. Now, when you worked on Dragon Ball Z, you said that you weren't too sure if it was going to take off. Now, once once it um, it started going early on, near I would say, I'm speaking from like a fan's perspective, near like the Cell Saga, the that's when it really started to pick up. A lot of people were watching it, and the Margin Buu. Did you like go back and be like, man, like I was a part of this, and now people really are drawn to my character, and I want to do more of him, and to kind of build off of that. How did you feel like when, when you figured out that Trunks was going to be in Dragon Ball Super? Uh, I was very excited because um, the, the two movies that happened before Super had no whisper of Trunks, except maybe he said the word no in one of them. So I was disappointed that I didn't get to play. 
And then when Super came back and everyone said that Trunks had a great arc, I was very excited. And it was, it was really fun to return to a character in a, in a way that I hadn't been able to before in other properties. Now, do you watch, do you watch the, the sub or do you just, do you, uh, do you not watch it and keep yourself surprised for the dub so that way you can have a fresh intake and be like, this is what's going to happen? I prefer to keep it fresh. It, it allows me as an actor to be more in the moment when I'm recording it. So the motion will be, uh, more, uh, raw. Now, for someone as myself, I mainly stick to the English um, anime. How do you find it? How do you avoid spoilers or avoid any kind of thing to when you're working to keep it fresh, to keep it uh, excited? Uh, it's it's not a day to day thing. It's sort of an overall philosophy of of uh, willful ignorance. Mm. I do my absolute best to when 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 I'm with people who are talking about it to leave the conversation when uh, people want to watch something, do not watch it. Um, I just try to, and if people are like, oh, you're gonna be so excited about what your character has coming up, I'll ask them politely to not tell me. So that when it happens, it's fresh. Now, I'm gonna kind of switch over to My Hero Academia. Uh -huh. um, uh, me personally, I'm loving it, and I love Shig I'm, I'm, I'm gonna butcher his name. I'm Shigaraki. Sorry. Shigaraki. I, I love his character because every time I see him, I get chills, but I, one of the things my girlfriend here told me that like he has a childish mentality and that's what kind of makes him so great where like he's impulsive a little bit. Now what's one of your favorite things about playing a villain? Because you said that like they're more interesting. But what about him in particular? Because when you think of like All My or Deku, they're more like pure hearted, but he's completely 180 on this. Yeah, I mean I, I like playing him because he he's not in, in some ways he's similar to uh, the Joker because his interest is not necessarily in a, in a means to an end. He's not looking for something to happen. He really just enjoys the chaos, you know? And I, I agree with what your girlfriend said because what you've got here is, um, as a parent, I can tell you <laughs> that you your kids are gonna go through that phase where you're living in a house with little jokers or shigarakis and all they <laughs> want to do is cause chaos and like there's no goal just chaos so i think back to that as i'm playing him now what is something like your what is one of the most memorable moments you had on my hero and dragon ball z that you could uh, share uh, uh it's i've been doing it for 20 years so really every day i wake up is that feeling I'm like, I still, still, I get to do this for a living and I get to go to conventions and I get to meet people and I, it's just, it's astounding. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.